So, Andrew, it's April. Already? It's April. It's Diamond Month. Yes, the birthstone for April. Absolutely. Diamond, yes. Yes. Um, so one of the questions that we get asked a lot in the shop and online um, is about diamond simulants. Yes. Um, advice when buying diamonds in general. Yeah. Um, the difference between lab-grown diamonds and other stones. Yes. Um, so, yeah, we thought we'd come and have a chat about that. Hmm. Um, so we know lab-grown diamonds have increased in popularity massively recently, haven't they? Absolutely. Um, and I think it is causing some confusion because some diamond simulants are also lab-grown. Yes, so this is the, I think this is the problem. I think um, there's always been diamond simulants out there. And I think nowadays some manufacturers of these diamond simulants are using the lab-grown diamonds banner as a bit of a smokescreen mm, to what they're selling. Everyone is aware now that there are diamonds out there that can be grown under laboratory conditions. And a lot of these websites are telling you certain facts hiding the real facts about the stones that they're selling deep down in their literature. Yes. It's there, but you've got to go looking for them. And it isn't exactly obvious just simply looking at the blurb. Definitely. And I think that blurb, as you say as well, can be extremely misleading Very and confusing, confusing um, yes. for people. So um, I, I've seen on two of these sites in the last couple of weeks, um, the people selling these diamond alternatives, whatever they may be. Yeah. And one of the claims they make is jewellers can't tell the difference mm -hmm. between um, diamond cubic zirconia and moissanite. Exactly. To which I say, bring on the stones. Bring on a little bit of a test. <laughs> so we have got, in this packet here, we've got three stones. Okay, now these three stones um, are beautiful. In their own right, each stone is gorgeous, they're bright, they sparkle, they look like diamonds, don't they? They do. Now, you'd be... From this distance. From this distance. <laughs> and one of these stones that we've got here yeah. is a lab-grown diamond. Another stone that we've got here is a mosonite. Mosonite? Mosonite, yes. Yep. Uh, mosonite primarily now is a man-made stone. It is, yeah. Yeah. And another stone here, I'm not necessarily doing these in order, but they are all jumbled up. And another one of these stones is a cubic zirconia, or a CZ, or a CZ. In their own right, they sparkle absolutely gorgeous. And I'm just mixing them around. And this is what we're going to be doing. Uh, a lot of the, we just said, the blurb says, jewellers cannot tell the difference. But we've got three stones. Lab-grown diamond, mosonite, CZ. And Louise is now very quickly... <laughs> going to be able to look at these stones and actually put in the right categories CZ, Mosonite, Lab Grown Diamond, there. How do I know? I've made it simple for myself. I've weighed the stones and I know what each stone weighs depending on what they are. So that's, I'm cheating, but Louise isn't. Well, you have to, you have, to have a way to be able to, to test that I'm just correct. Just to be on the safe side. Yeah. And most jewellers should be able to be using, uh, to be able to use an actual loop and a pair of tweezers. And that is all Louise is going to be able to use today to distinguish which stone is which. Well, this should be enough. It should be enough. This yes. should be enough because I've spent two, three years now yeah, three um, years, yeah. researching, learning, going on courses, training, practicing, um, being able to do this. So, yes. yeah, Not this is why this, I feel confident. Yeah, in general, yes. So, certain, certain stones have certain characteristics the way they look, uh, the way they're cut, and a lot of people will rely upon equipment and tools and diamond testers and so forth. These are not 100% accurate. That is no substitute for learning, training and knowledge when it comes to testing stones. You can trust your eyes and your loop. You can't necessarily trust a exactly. diamond tester. Yeah. So, very quickly, Louise. You're going to give them a final mix-up? We're going to give them a bit, okay. of a, a bit of a mix-up, <laughs> as you can see. Jumble, jumble, jumble. Love what we got here. We don't know where they stop. No one knows. And you're going to pick them up and very quickly now tell me, and they're all pretty much the same size. And there's no, looking from here, there's no real difference, but Louise is going to look. So you chose, you chose a lab-grown diamond to make these stones comparable in terms of their colour and their clarity. Yes, then. Okay. I have, yes. yes. Right. So you haven't really made it easy for me. No, 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 no. <laughs> the mosonite and the lab-grown diamond are very, very close in quality and colour and... Yeah, to the naked eye. They all look the same. Okay, let's have a little look. Okay, so yes, they 
from here they do look similar I'm noticing very subtle um, one looks a little bit bluer I think from here right, yeah. yeah possibly okay so let's start with this one and we're not going to be telling you what you should be looking out for obviously Louisa spent a lot of years learning how to do this but she's looking at the stone she's looking at the outside of the stone she's looking at the facets that's the little angles and little flats around the outside of the stone she's looking at the way it's cut looking at the angles looking at the proportions of the stone looking into the stone as well yes so i'm looking at the way the light behaves on the surface and also how the light behaves inside of the stone too okay that's that one she's done the first one <laughs> Stone number two, whoops, I don't want to drop it, do I? Okay. Okay, I'm confident with that one. Okay. And the third. Mm -hmm. Okay. So you're pretty certain what you got there? Yes, C I am confident. CZ, Mossonite and Lab Grown Diamond. I've got a um, piece of paper here. That shall now unfold. And on here is my readings. So we got them in order. CZ, Mossonite, Lab Grown Diamond. Let's quickly bring the scales into by here. And... There we go. Okay. So the cubic zirconia here, the CZ, should be... Just to explain the oh, yeah, um, the weight differences, even though they they are pretty much the same size, they will be different densities. Yes. Yeah. So okay. a CZ will be a different density to a mosnite and to a diamond. So, so a CZ should weigh 2.32 according to our scales, and it is 2.33. So one hundredth of a carat. That's spot on. Correct. Yeah, well that done, is Louise, for that one. Close enough. Thank you very much. Yes. The mosnite should weigh 0 0.96, 0.97. 0.98, yeah, okay. So that's exactly right. Great, so by default... The lab grown should weigh 1.12. But let's weigh it anyway. And that weighs 1.12. So well done. Excellent. Round of Thank applause you very for much. Louise. Well done. So you can see the stones look very similar. The lab grown diamond, you may be saying, well, that's not a real diamond because it's grown in a laboratory. But... Yeah, um, yeah. so this is where things get a bit interesting. So let's have a little look at the lab-grown diamond here. So diamond um, is a single element material. Okay. So it's just made of carbon. Yep. But what makes it a diamond is the, the arrangement of the atoms. They have to be arranged in a very, very specific way for mm -hmm. it to be a diamond. Otherwise, it's just graphite, isn't it? Yeah. Um, so, so in natural diamonds, um, the carbon atoms are arranged in this specific way. Um, and it's exactly the same with a lab-grown diamond. Okay. Um, so chemically and optically, they are the same. Yes. Um, so a good way to compare this is ice. I can make ice in my freezer at home. Yes. Or I can go to the Ar Arctic, at the, Ar the Antarctic and get some ice. Yes. Um, the ice in my in my freezer is no less ice. Mm, exactly. It just it's when it's been, natural. Yeah. And they're, they're made from the same elements, but one is simply made in the laboratory. Yeah. And one is simply made. One was made naturally, naturally, one is made with the help of science and technology, and these, these lab-grown diamonds are exactly the same. Exactly. So Great. There we go. Excellent. Okay, well so done. that's my... And isn't it stunning? It's that beautiful. So, uh, moissanite mm -hmm. resembles a diamond, mm -hmm. and it's a very convincing resemblance as well, it is. isn't it? It's beautiful. Um, but actually, it's a completely different material. Okay. And I think the confusion is arising where, as we said earlier, um, diamonds can be lab-grown, Moissanite's a lab grown. The moissanite occurs naturally, yes. but in such tiny small amounts, there's just not enough to make jewellery out of, so we grow it in labs. But it is naturally occurring. Is. Yes. So we know diamond is carbon. Mm -hmm. um, moissanite is actually a sil silicon carbide. Okay. So it's a completely different mineral. Mm -hmm. So we can't ever call this a, a lab, a lab grown, grown diamond, diamond or a diamond because it is not. It's like sticking cat ears on a dog and calling it a cat. Yes. It's never going to be a cat, is it? Um, but it's still a very, very great alternative. It's almost as hard and durable as a diamond, okay. which is brilliant. And in fact, um, 
the colours that come off a moissanite, which we call the fire, mm -hmm. um, it, it, it exhibits greater fire than a diamond. And it's to do with the way the stone splits up white light into its spectral colours. So this is kind of like, almost like a diamond, but, you know, showing off a little bit more. <laughs> um, yeah, but very much not a, not a, a diamond. Um, they can vary quite widely in price. Yes. Um, but they are a great alternative and a more affordable alternative to diamond. Yeah, I love them. Brilliant. Okay, so our CZ, or CZ as you like to call them, Andrew, um, is our least expensive or most affordable stone. Um, again, a completely different material. Okay. It is zirconium dioxide. Mm -hmm. um, so it's a completely different um, substance from a scientific point of view. Um, they're great. They're not as durable no. um, as, as the other two that, that we looked at. Um, and quite often when we see um, cubic zirconia jewellery that's been worn particularly rings, um, they do wear, so the, the yep. surface is kind of braid. Yes, and um, it loses so, its, it, it, its brightness, its luster, yeah. its re reflective properties, yeah. Yeah, um, but you know, this can be avoided with the right care. Yeah. So, yeah. Excellent. Another completely Very different. Good. And there are lots of other diamond um, simulants as well. There's white topaz, which is lovely. I know Clog, I use that a lot, don't they, mm -hmm. as, a, yeah, as, a, as, a, as a white colourless or clear stone. Yeah. Um, white sapphire, you know, we could go on and on, but we just thought we'd focus on the three that we looked at today. But very good. I do like it. Yeah, brilliant. So whatever you're buying or whatever you're in the market for, just make sure that what you're getting is, is what's been described, really, I suppose, exactly. isn't it? Yes. And if it's too good to be true, it really is. Yeah. But there's no such thing as a bad stone. But they're all beautiful stones in their own right. Absolutely. There's no such thing as a bad stone. There's just bad disclosures, bad descriptions, and, and sometimes bad people, unfortunately. Yep. So always look out and just... If, if something appears too good to be true, it really is. Yeah, and definitely get some advice, I suppose, as well. Is, is the, we, we will always advise people. Yeah. Um, I'd rather give somebody advice, even if they're going to go off and buy something else where exactly. than see people make costly mistakes exactly. or, or, or buy things that, as they're not advertised. Exactly. Excellent. Thank you very much. Very, very informative and well done on the test. Thank you. Well done. <laughs> Top of the class. <laughs>